Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and this is Valheim and we continue and today we're going to be doing our build and fortifying our positions. We need to get a base put down and between episodes I've been gathering plenty of wood and I've leveled the terrain off so I've got an idea of something that you can perhaps follow along or get some inspiration for a build yourself. Between episodes I've been hunting plenty of deer, we're needing lots and lots of leather as you can see, we're still wearing the basic equipment and everything we have, tools-wise, is all at a level 1. It's because we haven't upgraded our bench yet. And in order to do that, we needed plenty of flint and stone. Skills-wise, as you can see here, woodcutting has drastically improved. All of these skill points have a level cap of 100. Now, if we just come over to the workbench, you'll see here that we've currently got a level 1 workbench and in order to make upgrades to our items, we're going to need a level 2 workbench. And the workbench itself has several upgrades and goes up in level. So currently, we can't make a flint axe because we need to put something else down. Now. In order to make this a level 2 we need to put a chopping block down and that needs to be somewhere near the workbench so I'm just going to place it outside, it doesn't have to be in with the building with it, I'll just place it out in this corner here, you can see that ray of lights indicating that it connects there. And now if we come back to the workbench we'll have a list of new items that we can craft and we will be able to make upgrades to our weapons and armour. So there we go, we've got some fire arrows and some new leather items we can craft. A leather helmet there, which will give us an armor rating of 2, effectively doubling our armor rating if we wear this. And we can also make some more advanced arrows now. Let's make an upgraded flint axe. And a club's going to require some bones. We haven't got any of them just yet. But we can upgrade our crude bow. I think that's worth an upgrade. And the wooden arrows have been enough for hunting boar and deer. But we could certainly use, I think, some of the more advanced arrows when we start venturing out. Just put our tunic on there. So that gives a defense rating of 3 now with that upgrade. If we put the helm on, that'll bring us up to a defense of 5. So fire arrows and flint head arrows. You can craft some of them. They require resin. And we've got a few of these feathers. Find them in chests. I'm trying to shoot some of the seagulls when I see them. Okay, so let's make 20 of the flint head and let's just check the differences here. Do a pierce of 27 and pierce of 3 to 7, but the arrows have a damage of fire over the time, so Perhaps it might be a case of sticking both the arrows on a hot bar, perhaps firing a couple of fire arrows off first and then switching to the flint head arrows as they do a little bit more damage. You can set your opponent on fire. So I'm going to be experimenting with different arrows here. Might just attach them to our toolbar. Well, I think we'll begin constructing our base in the morning. I'll just cook off some food and we'll wait out the night here. Let's put some of this stuff away. Stick these feathers away as well. And before we go to bed, just do some more cooking. Well, I think it's cleared up, 
It's a bit of a foggy morning. But you can just about see. I have leveled this terrain out and as best as I can. We don't have access to a pick yet so we can't get into the side of the mountain and flatten out this space much more but I think what I have imagined we should be able to put down here just about. Now I have noticed that it looks like the logs have taken some damage to weather even when you put them in this form so I probably should have just repaired them before I grabbed some of the resources but I have got plenty of wood. I should have plenty enough to build what we have intended here because I've got wood in the crates inside as well. So again with building we need to have a workbench near the area to do any building in. And once we've done the building we can remove the workbench but we just need to have that close in order to put things down. Now I've experimented with a few ways of doing the floors but I've actually just found that the best way to do it is to start off with the floor and this way everything measures up with the joists above and what I want to do is I want to come out six wide by ten in length so let's just see how this looks again that white birch tree I don't have the right axe to be able to cut that down yet so eventually I will be able to get some more space so that was six wide and I want to do a six by ten and this game kind of forces you to be somewhat symmetrical in your designs. Okay, so that's a 6x10. Now, what I want to do is I want to put a porch on. I want to come out four across in the middle, like so. And then perhaps bring it out another two more. But I think we're too close to the edges. So I might actually have to bring this platform back at the back. Now I'll try using the hoe to level it off in the corner but without the pickaxe I'm not sure we can come out that far. No, I can't bring that any more level. Okay. Let's try that. I can come out too wide. I've brought it back 10. I've brought it back to the edge right at the back there. So now we can put our joists down. So I know the floorboards kind of look like they might be just floating above the mud at the moment. And they won't if you put, as you can see here, they are quite level with the ground. I've experimented a few ways with doing the floors, but we lay it down like so and then put the joists at the bottom. This is actually quite effective and then it gives all of our corners something to hook onto. So I just want to go around the outside all of these joists and that will level down to the ground. Everything will be structurally sound. Corners, I just want to put these larger joists. Okay so there isn't actually any windows in this game but I'm just going to use this half wall and I'm going to turn it around so the wood's on the inside and I'm thinking that's just such a nice view there that it really warrants a sort of double doorway. When I first started this I was thinking about having that porchway as our main entrance but I don't know, kind of liking that view there. So we'll put a large entrance on the side. And I just want to put all of these half walls down first. Just attach them to all of the joists. And I've turned them round on the outside like that. Just gives it that little extra texture. Okay, so what I want to do here is I just need two more of the half walls and we're going to use the outer gates as an entrance rather than the small doors. So we just do that and flip this one round. That's a much grander entrance. And there we go. 
So we need to get some more joists in and build up our walls and windows. But yeah. I'm imagining a giant fireplace in the middle. Right, let's just get some joists in. Okay, so again, if we just use the half walls and then the full walls come up to the height of the joists. So a couple of walls here. And I'll just put all the walls in first. So where are we going to have windows along here? Um, on each side. Do you know, in fact, it's such a nice view. I might keep that whole entire thing as open. Just have it as one long window. So if we put a wall here. Get that in there like so. Switch back to the half walls. No, it's just such a nice view over the ocean. I'm going to be building in the front there, so... Yeah. I'll do that. Having another entrance there. Okay, I think things are starting to take a shape now. If we start using some of these corner pieces, we can begin to see where a roof will come in. Now this entry is actually just going to sit slightly lower than the rest of the roofs, but then it will make it less square. I think more Norse inspired. I do want to kind of recreate a Rohan. I like to think a few episodes in, we've got our own little Edarist here. Okay, so a couple of walls above the door and two here. Just find the snap points. If we can. Just there, I had it. Come on. There we go. And I think I also add a cross section at the top here. Not only does that create more stability, it really has a nice effect on the joists as well. So these main joists here are going to support the upper roof. And I want to keep this corner clear as I'm planning on making a workbench in the corner. So it might be overkill if we build it all the way along. But I've gone two joists high. I may need to go a third. And just do ourselves a little makeshift scaffold just using some stairs we do get all of our resources back so just temporarily put these up we'll be able to get up a little bit higher bring these joists up to three levels instead of two okay so we'll just come down through the wall we put one more on the outside that just connects the structure to the floor Okay, there we go. We just come to the outside. One more of these beams will connect it to the floor. And this structure is going to be able to support our roof. So, I think three should be enough. I was going to do a fourth at the end. I like the angles that come down. So I use the 45 degree angle corner at the top. We went three posts high. And yeah, I'm liking the look of that. I don't think it's necessary to have it on my corner here, so I'm just going to get rid of these joists. And then I can make this corner of the building more of a crafting area. Just here. I'm going to stick a couple of the giant gates. Just one on each corner here. And... There we go. Again, I'm just going to use the cross 
section. I think I might put it on all of them. They don't actually need any more support at the top because everything's green. It's only when it's yellow and red. You can go up to three spaces away, but this... I think it looks really cool as well. Yeah, so we'll put one on each of them. Now, of course, in the centre here, I want to have our cooking station. We remember Rohan and Theoden's Hall. Those Nordic buildings always had the halves in the middle. So we'll do that for our hall as well. Let's just get rid of these scaffoldings. Okay. Yeah, I'm liking the look of that. And we could, of course, come out even wider with this. We've only got this space to work with for the time being. And it looks less square. Yeah, I'm liking this. And I'll just come up, put a roof over our little entry here. Spin these round. Now we've got it roofed, our wood will stop taking damage. It does take damage quite quick, as you'll see some of the wooden planks have turned green, but once I've got a roof on all of this, it will be fine. And this roof is going to follow the beams. And sometimes a little awkward to find the snapping points. Those of you who are used to building in Ark will be all too familiar with awkward snapping points. We'll get there, we'll get there. I just created a few in that corner so it's difficult. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. Right in the centre here, I've just taken up some floor tiles and put a couple of fires down here. I've actually got quite a lot of room for more cooking stations if we need. With the smoke rising, deliberately put the roof above us with a gap so classically all of that smoke can chimney out of our building. Yeah, I like that. To do some repairs. Right, let's put our let's put our workstation just in the corner there. We can look out into the ocean as we're crafting our tools. And I can now get rid of these stations that we put down on the outside here. Only needed them as workbenches to make this building, but building doesn't fall down if you remove them and I just missed a few repairs here now we've got a roof on our structure they'll stop taking damage and of course we're going to need plenty of storage chests so I'm going to utilize this corner here and put the chests sideways on that way we can get a load in a line and just need to space them out I'll just do it evenly of course we can use the half walls to stack the chests so we'll actually have double so we'll come out, I don't know, four or five let's try that perhaps at the end we put a wall or a corner, Will that work, just there, like so, there we go, it's more like a dedicated storage area, you can just use this piece here, and make a shelf, just, there is a snapping point somewhere for it, we'll just shelve our storage chests and we can stack them up too high, and I just saw it there, Just above the wall. There it is. Oh, just had it then. There we go. And 
Then we can put chests down on top. Yeah, I think that's much better. Just come out a couple more wider. We've got plenty of storage space down there. Okay, so... Just for looks mainly, I'm going to put a couple of joists here. It doesn't need the extra support. But, I'll stick two here. I'm just going to wall the fireplace off here. So, our half thatch roof has done the trick of letting the fire escape. And... When it's raining, the rain can't actually extinguish our little campfires there with the way it's placed like so. So I'm just going to put a wall around this just to give it an effective chimney, but everything's working correctly. And if we just place this chopping block outside, it's a level two workbench. Now that we got some daylight and some better weather, let me show you round the House of James. Now I am happy to report that in spite of bad weather, our campfires kept going with this design here. And now that we've got a bit of daylight, I can show you a little bit better that we just utilised the triangle thatch roof in the corner there. The smoke's able to escape out of the sides. More importantly, the rain can't extinguish our campfires. So now I have grinded a little bit because we needed to get 20 scraps of bore leather in order to create a tanning rack. That's going to level our workbench up to a level 3. Eventually we're going to be able to craft better armour. Now I thought I'd put that down first but we're going to need a few more items before we can craft some better stuff. I know we're going to need some bones and some more deer and boar eventually we will open up some other items as well so it's a case of going out and doing a little bit of hunting and some more levels i think that's all the time we have for this episode of valheim next time around i want to be concentrating on putting some sort of perimeter wall down as time moves on in this game, we will get raided and the enemies will get progressively worse even though we're in a relatively safe area for the time being. So we do need to get some more defences down and of course I'm going to have to grind for some more wood and trees between episodes. I also need to hunt a lot more deer and a lot more boar to get some more leather together before we're in a position to take on the next boss. But until next time... I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see ya.